Hi guys. Okay, so it is Sunday. It is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you guys out there. Uh, you won't see this unfortunately until Tuesday, but at least I said it right. Hope you guys are having spending time with your family, having a great weekend, doing all the things. So, um, so today we're going to talk about something near and dear to me. Um, I talk about it a lot and I feel like we all might need this little breath or this follow up or this reminder right now, but, um, how we handle what's going on around us, how, what we do to calm our inner minds to where we can function on a day to day and life still be okay. Even if we have things around us just crumbling down. Okay. I see this so much day to day. Um, kind of, kind of go in again. I'm, I'm not a therapist. I am working to be one, but I'm not licensed at all. So please don't take this to your therapist and say, but she said, cause that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to put some stuff out there for you guys. Okay. So <clears throat> I am going to be doing therapy again. I'm getting some clientele set up. Um, it feels great to be saying that, but in the meantime, I am able to work in a facility with kids and, it has been such a reminder after a horrible year how blessed and lucky I am, how we blessed and lucky we are just to be able to watch this. Because guys, so much around the world that we don't even probably think of on a day to day. And if you do, it probably holds to your heart like it does mine. So being thankful and being thankful that we can be where we are today. And being thankful that we have the tools or the mindset or the ability to, you know, process whatever's going on and then go through and deal with the emotions pretty much. So, um, at work, we talk a lot about coping skills. What coping skills do you use? Because it's easy for them to understand, you know, children to understand what coping skills do you use? I say it to my adult clients as well. Because I feel like we need that little bag of availability, available skills that we can put into use to help, you know, produce a f and maintain functioning. Because without that, if we don't know what to do, if we don't know what helps, we seem just to crumble and break and fall. And that's how, that's how it ends up being a downward spiral. So, um, one thing that I've been dealing with emotionally is... I have somebody very near and dear to me that is really struggling right now. And I, I don't even know that they know that they're struggling because I, I just don't know that they're aware. They've had so much happen in the last year and so many big changes, you know, that came through. And I don't think that they process these changes. And I don't think that they have the ability to even see that they're in a cycle right now, just twirling and twirling and and I've tried and I, I spoke to them and I reached out and I tried some more and I tried some more and they just still aren't grasping it so it's hard so I have to use my own coping skills because part of me wants to go hover up and cover over this person and be like hey it's okay I got you but what does that really help for me to take them under my wing and put them there and just do it all for them what does that help nothing really I, what helps is if i can show them that i've got my stuff together i i freak and i panic but then i use my little bag and i pull all my skills out and I, I go on so i think in the middle of me going through this just with this person i've had to use some of my own coping skills you know use some of my own tools in my, my bag and i had to pull them out and really focus on them um I think the first thing that sounds crazy because we think we all do it is breathing. Just stop. Don't, don't respond until you can stop and breathe. Like you have to be able to breathe and you have to have a clear mental mindset. And, and people that know me will, they'll tell you, I'm the first to tell you, just stop. Just stop for a minute and think about it. Just Woosa, just because normally if you can get yourself calm the situation is still bad but it's doable okay for example i mean you get hurt and you're freaking out 
that freaking out is not making anything but worse. So I'm an asthmatic, you know, and the first thing I do when I start having a hard time breathing, I'm like, you know, and then I, I panic. So I, I make it worse. And I really just have to be like, stop, Diane, just stop and take some breaths and deep breathing and calm myself so that I can, you know, be involved in the situation without making it worse. So deep breathing, that's one that I tell everybody. It doesn't seem like it would do much, but it will, you know? I can be having a bad day. I can be dealing with all kinds of stuff. And I'm, if I just take a few minutes to just go to myself and I evaluate, that's the next thing for me. Evaluation is big for me. I evaluate the importance, the effect, what it's going to do, what's going to happen, um, where it is, where it relates in my life, where it rates in my life. I evaluate the situation. I evaluate and I assess the situation. And then I can move forward because I've stopped, took some deep breaths, walked away from the situation. Maybe that's the next one is walking away. You know, you can't walk away from some things in life, of course. You know, if your kids are on your nerves, don't walk away from them. <laughs> don't. But do take a break. You know, go to your room, take five minutes, chill yourself out, go back to the situation. Um, whatever it may be, the situation. You, you can, if you and somebody are just feuding, you can just walk away from that. Because if it's not going to help you, and if it's, it has a, a negative effect, even in the moment, it's probably not good for you. Probably just not good for you. Okay? So we have deep breathing, <clears throat> evaluating the situation, and then walking away. Knowing when to walk away is important. Okay? And when I say walk away, am I saying walk away forever? No. No, no, not at all. Walk away from for the moment. Okay. Now I'm not even saying you have to leave the room, but if you could literally can just take a few steps and be like, what is the point? What's the, what's the goal here? It can, it can help. Okay. Um, I have this kid at work and poor guy goes from zero to mad, like livid in 0.2 seconds like playing having a good time doing karaoke yesterday off the deep end he went i mean off the deep end and and he says things he doesn't mean and he does things that he doesn't want to do he just 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 says anger because he doesn't know how to process it he doesn't know how to process that feeling of anger he doesn't know that it's okay to be mad and just go on he doesn't know so it's important for me because one thing you have to do when you're working with kids is you have to get on their level and you have to be like, hey, dude, focus, look at me. And my daughter will tell you I do this with her too. I'll be like, look at me because you need that attention to come to you. And then you can, you have a better chance of saying, take a minute, think about it, breathe, breathe. You know, you have to get their attention and you have to get them to calm down. My daughter is the worst probably with that because she will call and she'll just be crying. And I mean, big old gorilla tears. And you can tell she's just overwhelmed with that emotion at the time. And and I'll tell her, you got to stop. I can't, I can't hear you. I can't hear what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. So can you breathe? And it takes me a minute or two to get her just to calm down. But with, with that minute or two, the things that come out of her mouth for processing what she's going through at that moment are freaking amazing. And she's able to calm herself down just by talking about it. So she hasn't been able to self do it. She, you know, she's crying and upset. She's not been able to just to pull it up herself, you know, pull the little bag, take out the tool breathing. She's not able to do that herself yet, but at least she's open to that, that coping skill, knowing that, Hey, I just need to breathe. Um, I think another big thing is talking about how you're feeling. Um, that is such a coping skill and people don't realize it. Okay. So you and your buddy are sitting there and you get angry. We are so scared to say, man, you just hurt my feelings and, and it, and it sucks. And, and you have to express how you feel to them because if not, a, it doesn't help you and you just stay fueled. B, they might not be aware of it. And if they are and they're like, sucks to be you, 
maybe you need to evaluate that situation and go ahead and walk away. I mean, if your friends don't care about how you feel, it's obviously a problem. So just a few things there. Um, and, and the reason I think that I, I chose this today is because I am struggling with how to help my friend that's just kind of cycling. You know, how do I help them? How do I get them to see what's going on and what they need to focus on? Because at this point, you know, this whole month or month, month this year, it's been the same. It's just been cycle after cycle after cycle. And they get a break and they're good for a minute and then cycle, 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 cycle. And then it's something else. And, and, and I, I just want to tell them, stop, stop. Come to reality, look at what's happening around you and focus on what your goal is. Because you know what? Right now you're goalless. You can say you have goals, but you're goalless because you're not working towards them. You're not doing anything at all to help your situation. So I, I just, I have to use my own coping skills at that point. And I have to breathe and be like, it's their time, their choice. They have to do it. I have to step back and that's hard for me. But if I, if I don't step back and I just feed into it and feed into it and feed into it and feed into it, it only creates chaos for me and I can't, I can't, I can't have that chaos. Nobody needs to have that chaos. We got to know when to step back, take, you know, just step, step back, take a break, support them as good as you can and go on. And, and so I know if I'm having trouble finding the coping skills to use to get through that with them, I know they're struggling. If I go to work and, and this kiddo is struggling to find a coping skill to use and instead just going from zero to angry in 0.2 seconds, he doesn't know what coping skills are. He doesn't know how to use them. We can talk about it, but he doesn't know how to use them. He doesn't know what to do with it. Okay. Because you can ask him, what are your coping skills? We do this with every kid we get in. What are your coping skills? What helps you calm down? Deep breathing. But until they're in the moment and have been able to practice and use it, it doesn't help. Because nine out of 10 kids that come through tell me their coping skill is deep breathing. And then they get mad and then they're like, Bruh. and you're like, hey buddy, have you used the coping skill of deep breathing? I'm not doing that. And they're just fueled, you know, or like I have one that likes to make a phone call to somebody because that, that person helps calm down. Hey, do you want to call somebody? I'm not doing that. Blah, 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 blah. They just don't want to use their coping skills because they talk about it, but they don't practice it. We don't practice it. We don't think about it on a daily, you know, we just don't because we get so absorbed in life. And then to be honest, the stigma of trying to say, I'm using my coping skills. People are embarrassed by that. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by it. I don't want you to be embarrassed by it. I don't want you to say it's coping skills. If you don't want to be embarrassed by it, say it's, you know, I, I'm taking a break. I'm taking a breather. I'm doing me. I am doing what I need to do. Whatever you want to say, as long as you're actually practicing and learning and using. Okay. So we're just going to list some coping skills that I know a lot of people do use kids and adults and um, breathing, making a phone call talking to a friend, coloring, drawing, going outside for a walk, exercise, um, sleeping. Sleeping is a coping skill, believe it or not. Some people can sleep for 15 minutes, get over it and go on. Um, I don't know, journaling, journal about what's happening. There's just so many coping skills out there that you can get practicing, using, used to, and they help with more than just anger. If you're sad, you can use them. If you're mad, you can use them. Sometimes if you're way excited, you can use them because you need to calm down. If, if you're feeling chaos or if you're feeling, you know, overwhelmed, if you're feeling tired or unmotivated or whatever feeling you're feeling, if you feel that you need to ground yourself, okay? Find a way, find a, find a way to help you do that. Find a coping skill to help you process it. Processing what you're feeling is very important. And if you don't know how to do that, it becomes a problem, okay? So think about your coping skills. Think about how you process. Think about what you do. 
Think about your relaxation, whatever it may be. Think about it and then think about how you're actually practicing and using it. If you are, if you say you are, kudos to you if you are and you are. You say you are and you're actually doing it, hats off to you. (coughs) Not many of us can do that. Um, If you haven't found one yet, try things, try anything, anything to help you feel better about the situation. Um, if you're struggling and don't even know what the hell I'm talking about, that's okay too. That, that's good. Reach out. I'll be glad to tell you. Um, if you use them all the time or say you use them all the time, but have no idea what they are, reach out. We'll go over and we'll see what works for you. Um, because I think that, you know, especially in the year that we've got, we've had, you know, I, I, I think about the last, I don't know. April, May, June, we're almost to July. So 15 months, they've been living hell and they haven't been easy. I was just seeing an article today about how people are now scared, which that's another thing that you might use a coping skill skill for, to go out and do because they're so used to being home and and locked down and shut down. So there's no problem with saying, hey, There's a coping skill that I can do. What do I need to do? Maybe you need some ideas. Maybe this has helped you. Maybe you need something further and you would like to see what it is. You guys always have availability to message me on the comments. There's even an email link in our page. Email me. If you don't want it publicized, email me. If you don't mind me knowing who you are. Um, I'm always free to talk to anybody. Definitely not your therapist again putting that out there but i do love helping people i do love helping to motivate people to become better person of who they are so please feel free to share this like it and subscribe and hit the bell that way you can see it when i come available and enjoy again i hope you guys have enjoyed the week i hope you can leave this video feeling a little bit like She's right. I need to calm down and think about it because I know this didn't say motivation in the title, but guess what? When you can get all this chaos and craziness or sadness or scared, work through whatever feeling you're feeling, and you can get back on a track to motivate you, you've motivated yourself. That's all motivation. So do it. And until next time, guys, please remember to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. And we'll see you next, in a few days, (laughs) Thursday, I think. So have a great one. Bye.